populist candidate Jair Bolsonaro beat the leftist candidate in the first round of voting in the Brazilian elections, the second and final round takes place this weekend. And to discuss it, I was delighted to be joined by Felipe G. Martins. He's a political analyst specialized in forecasting and a professor of international politics. He's worked at the US Embassy in Brazil and he is the director of international affairs of PSL, which is Bolsonaro's party. First, I asked Felipe to explain how the political and economic situation in Brazil over the last 10 years helped fuel the rise of a populist candidate like Bolsonaro. Yes, we uh, should go uh, way back than 10 years ago, but I know we, we have a little bit of time. So uh, going back 10 years ago or maybe 20 years ago, all we had was the left. So we didn't have any conservative movement in Brazil. We didn't have any right wing party in Brazil. We didn't have any right wing politician in Brazil. We had Bolsonaro, we had some other guys, but they didn't have a clear identity. And that's due to the uh, military di dictatorship. So they, uh, the left used the dictatorship to shame the conservatives, to shame uh, the political right wing in Brazil. And for decades and decades, all we had was a, a, a contest between leftists. We had PT, Partido dos Trabalhadores, the Workers' Party, and uh, in the other case, uh, PSDB. PSDB stands for Social Democrats, but both of them uh, used to act on the culture, uh, on media, to advance the, the diversity, the progressive agenda. And when we had the internet, so we start to work uh, uh, on critics and we start to work uh, on means of fighting the left. And here we have to mention a guy that was key for what's going on right now in Brazil, that's Olavo de Carvalho. Olavo de Carvalho is uh, a professor, a philosopher of thousands and thousands of Brazilians. And he uh, can, can, we can say he is the father of the Brazilian conservative movement. So before Olavo, we didn't have anything like a right wing. Even Bolsonaro and his children uh, say they, 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 they uh, came after Olavo and they, uh, they backed Olavo's ideas. And that's, uh, that's why uh, we, we are now having all this enthusiastic about your work and the work uh, some other guys do in the US and uh, in Great Britain and also in Europe. So uh, we have a, a lot of demand for change and also for a creation of a conservative party that is now underway. Uh, PSL, uh, the party um, a director of uh, international relations and also the party of Bolsonaro has elected 52 uh, deputados, 52 congressmen. Uh, and before that, uh, in, in the last election, we only had one. The Western media portrayal of Bolsonaro is of this horrendous right-wing military figure who hates women and gay people. In fact, there was a big article in The Guardian on Thursday by Noam Chomsky and other intellectuals saying that Bolsonaro threatens the world, not just Brazil's fledgling democracy. They even claim his supporters were behind 70 violent attacks after the first round of voting. Just how far removed is the Western media portrayal of Bolsonaro from reality? Well, I would say it's as far from reality as it can be. Bolsonaro is none of those things uh, the corrupt media and the establishment media has been calling him. He's not a dictator, he's not a, an authoritarian figure, he's not a homophobe, he's not a bigot, he's none of those things. So he's a threat to the crime syndicate. Uh, and his popularity, as, as you might have, have been seeing, his uh, being received, receiving, received in airports by huge crowds, and that's due to his fight on crime, his fight against crime. His stance is to fight crime along uh, its whole spectrum from everyday crimes such as street robbery and rape, organized crime, which uh, here in Brazil includes dr drug trafficking with all its linkings to uh, terror, uh, terror networks and other, other criminal uh, organizations worldwide. So uh, here we have PCC, uh, Primeiro Comando da Capital. It's like the first command of the capital, the first command of Sao Paulo, it, it will be. So it's a very organized crime organization <clears throat> that has links to Hezbollah, Hamas, and a lot of Islamic uh, terrorist groups. And <clears throat> uh, Bolsonaro has, uh, has promised to, to face PCC and also CV, Comando Vermelho, the Red Command. 
So the red command, uh, the name, the name, name gives an idea on the ideological stance of those uh, criminal organizations. He's not a threat to democracy. He's not a threat to uh, minorities. He's a threat to organized crime. He's been accused of introducing a police state, or wanting to at least, to handle this. Is this massive spike in murders a, a more recent phenomenon, or has it been a problem in Brazil for a lot longer than that? No, so if you get the statistics, you'll see uh, the, the murder rate uh, is getting higher and higher uh, alongside with PT's rise to, to, to the power. So you have to see that uh, it was a systematic uh, a systematic, uh, uh, a systematic view from the left that criminals sh should not be punished. So they uh, used the, the uh, judicial system, they used uh, also uh, the politicians to protect crime. And that's, uh, that's, that comes from, from the links that PT has with the FARCs. Uh, are you familiar with the FARCs in uh, Colombia? So PT found, founded a Forum de São Paulo, Foro de São Paulo, uh, it's São Paulo's Forum. It's an organization created uh, in the words of Lula, uh, our former president, to uh, build in Brazil what was lost uh, in Brazil and Latin America, to build in Latin America what was lost uh, in uh, Eastern Europe. So uh, it was built uh, between 19 and, uh, 1991, 1992, and the idea was we need to rescue uh, communism from uh, what was left in, in the Eastern Europe. So the idea was to connect all, uh, all, all the organizations, be it parties or even criminal organizations in Latin America that was uh, aligned with communism ideology. So uh, it, it was put forward by Lula, by Fidel Castro, by Hugo Chavez, and a lot of fellas here in Latin America that had the same idea to, to build here a, a huge country that would unite Venezuela, Brazil, uh, Cuba, uh, all those countries uh, putting forward uh, uh, a communist ideology, a socialist ideology to, uh, uh, in the end, uh, go after the U.S. and defeat U.S. So it was uh, 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 Lula's dreams, uh, Fidel Castro's dreams, and also Hugo Chavez's dreams. And with this link to the FARCs and other criminal organizations, they uh, made always, uh, they built a system to protect criminals here in Brazil. And so they, they got to power and uh, criminal uh, uh, murder rates, also rape, robbery, uh, they just exploded. Because, of course, he's portrayed in the Western media as this gross misogynist, this woman hater. In fact, there was a comment he once told a congresswoman in 2014, I wouldn't rape you because you're not worthy of it. That was his comment. But then again, 42% of women intend to vote for him. So how do we explain this supposed... A portrayal of, of Bolsonaro as this gross misogynist when he has relatively large female support still. So starting by the, the, the declaration that he would not rape uh, that woman because she didn't deserve it, they were actually arguing uh, she was protecting a guy that just uh, had raped, raped a, a girl uh, like uh, uh, an entire week, uh, the guy spent raping the girl and then he cut, he cut uh, her, her head off. And Bolsonaro was saying that that guy should go to jail, and the other the other uh, congressman was saying no, he doesn't need to go to jail. He's just a kid. He didn't know what he was doing. The guy was 17, if I'm not mistaken. And then most, Bolsonaro was uh, was arguing with her, and then she called him a raper. And then uh, uh, he he said no, I, I I'm not a raper. And if I was a raper, I would not rape you because you don't deserve. Now, that's an absolutely fascinating example of how the Western media completely strips out the context, because all we've seen in the Western media is this quote, on its own with zero context, I wouldn't rape you because you're not worthy of it. They don't tell you the backstory, which you just explained, that he's literally wanting to prosecute a rapist. He's responding to an insult, the congresswoman calling him a rapist, which is a far worse insult. None of that context ever appears in the Western media, there's another one about minorities, which is apparently Bolsonaro said, quote, minorities have to bend down to the majority. The minorities should either adapt or simply vanish. He was talking about indigenous lands in the Amazon rainforest. And this is another big controversy or criticism of Bolsonaro that apparently in Time magazine reported on this recently as well. He wants his business associates or he wants to 
pave a highway through the Amazon rainforest. How accurate is that criticism? Uh, the minority here in Brazil uh, only has, uh, have power when they are backed by billionaires such as George Soros, such as uh, some of our own billionaires here in Brazil, also by the establishment media. And he, what he was saying was our conservative values, the Brazilian values, needed to be respected. They need to be, uh, 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 they, they, need, they need to have a place in public debate because, as I was telling you earlier, there's no place for conservatives in establishment media. It's not even like in the US where you have Fox News uh, and other channels. We, uh, don't have any channel here that gives space to conservatives such as myself, such as Olavo de Carvalho, such as Bolsonaro. We have to go to the internet, the social media, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We don't have any space uh, on, on, public, uh, on establishment media. So uh, what he was saying was we need to respect the values of the majority. We have 91% of the Brazilians are Christians. Uh, and you don't have any Christians uh, in, in, like a media, in the media, in the academia, in any of those establishment, uh, establishment, uh, uh, establishment powerhouses. So uh, what he was saying basically was, we are going to respect the minorities, we are going to protect the minorities, as, uh, uh, protecting them from violence, from crime, but we need to respect the values of the majority. That that was the basic point he was make, make, making. It's very dumbing down our people because uh, if you get like the PISA test that tests uh, our capacity to, to read, to write, to do basic operations in mathematics, we are like in the last, in the last, uh, the last group. So like uh, with countries that are much, much more poor th than we are, uh, and that's a big problem here too. Uh, asking for Dilma, Dilma Rousseff's impeachment. And one of the movements that uh, was created there was NBL, that is uh, uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian uh, liberal Brazilian movement. So liberal here uh, doesn't have the same meaning as the US, so we are talking about uh, classical liberals. They are classical liberals, they defend uh, free market economics, they, they defend uh, the ideas of Milton Friedman, and also uh, other uh, economists such as Mises, and M MBL got, got in the story right there. In 2014, they created a big movement uh, alongside us with other movements such as uh, Vem Pra Rua, uh, Revoltados Online, and a lot of other movements that uh, uh, asked for Dilma's impeach impeachment, and she got impeached uh, like in 2016. So MBL uh, used YouTube and the social media to channel its message. And two, uh, two guys, uh, Mamãe Falei, that, that is like mother, um, I'll, I'll tell them, uh, that, 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 that's what that, that means. And Kim Kataguiri got, got elected, they had a big vote. And I believe they, they are part, part of this larger movement. They are not part of PSL, they are not part of Bolsonaro's party, but now in the second round they are uh, throwing all their support uh, behind him. This is, this is a home that is beat.